All right, hello again. This is Jeff Scott of Blackhawk Technical College. I've been going through the lectures in our book, which is the Tony Gaddis uh, Java book for the 152-143 class for the spring 2016 semester. Before I go on to Chapter 2, what I thought I would do was to go through how to create a very simple program using Eclipse. So what we have to do first is get into our virtual desktop. You may already have a shortcut for the virtual desktop which says VMware Horizon Client on your desktop. If you don't, you can click the Start button at the bottom of your screen, click the All Programs button and go down to the very bottom. And then you should have next to the bottom one that's there, you should have a thing that says VMware. If you click on that, you should see the icon. If for some reason you don't have the uh, virtual desktop on your system, and it shouldn't happen, but if it does, let me know and I will immediately talk to Terry Prindle and get, get it set up so that you do have it on. You can also download this on your home machine. We'll talk about that, but just not right now. So I'm going to click on this, and that will open it up. And it looks like this. But you have to log into it. There's different ways, but what I'm going to show you is the simplest way. Where it says desktops.blackhawk.edu, I'm going to take my mouse over here and double click. Now it's asking me to log in, and you log in using the same credentials that you do to um, log into Windows proper. All right? So you should put in your username, you should put in your password, your domain should be set, you hit enter. You're going to not see a thing called external desktops. I'm not sure why I have that, but you should see this that says Students Development Desktop. If you double click on that, that will get you into the virtual desktop. So I'm in now. You might say, well, no, you're just in your regular desktop. No, if I go up here, I can go back and forth. There's my regular desktop. Right there, there's my regular desktop. And there's my virtual desktop. Again, they look very similar. All right, yours is probably going to be fairly empty unless you were using it last semester. I've also got things available to me that you probably don't have available to you. All right, if you click Start under your virtual desktop, you should have an icon there that says Eclipse. You might want to right mouse click and uh, pin that to your, to your Start menu or, or really un or pin it to your taskbar. But I'm just going to click on it, which will start up Eclipse. So I'm going to Start, click on Eclipse. You may have a different version other than Mars like I have, and if you do, don't worry about it. It will have absolutely zero effect on this class. It'll take a little bit for this to load. It might take a little bit more time for you for it to load. In fact, let's do this. All right, I'm going to close this. Okay? And I'm, I'm just going to close all of this. And why? Because this is what I should have told you to do first. Okay? All right. Uh, I'm going to come in here, and I've already got a folder with this name. Okay, I'm just going to call this temp for right now. That's fine. What I'd like you to do is on your virtual desktop, and let me clean mine up a little bit. All right, so on my virtual desktop, and I wish I wouldn't have done that. Like I said, I'm just cleaning mine up. You shouldn't have to go through all this junk that I'm going through right now. Okay, so I'd like you to right mouse click on your virtual desktop, choose new folder, and create a folder called 152-143. That's where you will hold all of the programs, the Java programs that you create under Eclipse. So you'll notice I have nothing in it, okay? Then start up Eclipse. So I apologize, I should have told you to create the folder first. That's a one-time shot. So get into Eclipse. We're going to go over this in class, but I just want you to see it so if you have any problems you can go back and watch it on your own. So it's going to come up and look like this. That's exactly what yours should look like. You might get this message. If you do, don't worry about it. Just click Close. You can immediately close the welcome screen by clicking that X that's up there. So it looks like this. This is your Package Explorer area. This is the area in which you'll write your code. This is your task list area. This is your outline area. You really won't need either one of these 
for the semester, but let's just leave them there for right now. First thing you should do is click on File and go down to Switch Workspace, all right, and then click Other. Now, mine's already set, but let's pretend that it wasn't set at all. So I'm going to click Browse. I'm going to tell the, student, the system to go to my desktop, and under my desktop, I've got a folder someplace in there <clears throat> that is called 152.143. Okay? So there's my desktop, and I know it's here. It's not exactly showing me what it usually shows me here, but that's on me, so. I'm going to try to put in a backslash 152, and there it found it, 152.143. Okay? <clears throat> so if I click OK, notice what it says, D colon backslash users backslash J Scott backslash desktop. Yours should say the same thing, except instead of J Scott, yours should have your login here. Once you click that, click OK. Now, Eclipse will restart when you do that, so don't let that worry you. But what it's done, it is, is it is reset my folder to be the 152-143 folder, and it put a metadata thing in there. I'm not sure why. Close this again and close this. <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to do, and this is, John, if you ever watch this, I hope I'm doing it correctly. So let me walk through it. Windows. I think it's perspective, custom perspective, okay? Then we come in here and we go to menu visibility and we find, I wish I would have paid more attention when you've shown me this, John. I think we go to window, <clears throat> and we make sure that I believe it's navigation is, is set up. Don't worry, because we will do this in class, and John will help walk me through it, and we'll have that set. So, all right, I'm going to just come in and start writing a simple Java program. <clears throat> Again, I don't need my task list, so I'm going to remove that. I don't need the outline, so I'm going to remove that, which gives me a little bit more room. All right. So the first thing that I have to do, because this is empty, is I have to create a Java project. So I click File, New, Java Project. Simple enough. And it asks for a name. <clears throat> you can put blank spaces in this name. There'll be some other stuff we'll do in just a minute where you can't. But I'm going to call this Chapter 01-Payroll because it'll be a payroll program that's based off of the material in Chapter 1. You, you can click Next here, but nothing magical happens when you do. So just click Finish. And you'll notice it created a brand new folder for me that's called Chapter 01 Payroll. That's my Java project. What's in it right now <clears throat> is something from the Java runtime environment. It's got a bunch of different stuff that it, these JAR files, which are Java archive files, to help me with my program. I, I should never have to touch those. And it has a folder here that says SRC. I'm not ready to start yet because in that folder that says SRC, I have to right mouse click, go to New, and choose Package. Everything that we do here inside of Eclipse will do in a package. When you name your package, you typically use a reverse domain notation. Since mine is jscott at blackhawk.edu, I'll call mine edu.blackhawk dot j scott okay you can do the same thing so yours would be edu dot blackhawk dot students dot your name okay don't worry about the package info just click finish now you've got a package in here all right there's one more thing we have to do and then we can start typing we have to come in and actually create ourselves a java class so we right mouse click on our package go to new go down to class and we're just going to call this payroll. For the first several chapters that we create in this, for the first several chapters that we create for this class, 
we'll be doing the majority, if not just about all of our work, we'll be doing it inside of a package, a thing that's called main. All right? So that's what we want to do right now. We do want a main. So we keep everything the way it is. We typed in payroll right there, and we check the button that says public static void main. So I'm going to check that, click finish, and it started to build this for me. I could run this right now. There would be nothing in it because there's no actual ex executable code, but I could run it right now. Now I've got to remember how to change this. General appearance, colors and fonts, Java, What I'm trying to do is change my font size, and I, I'm real close. View and text editors? No, I don't think so. No. Java, it's in here someplace. Java editor text, maybe that's it. Display font. Um, editor font, it's one of these. So it says we're using Tahoma 8. I don't want that. So let's edit this. I want to make it 14 so it's nice and big for you to be able to see it. And of course it didn't work at all. Let's try that one more time. Window preference, preferences. All right, let's close all this. Window preferences. Like I said, I wanted to close all that to show you it from the beginning. All right, I'm going to click on the tab that says general. I'm going to go to click on the tab that says appearance. I'm going to find where it says colors and fonts. I'm going to look in there and find the thing that says Java display font. I'm going to click edit. I'm going to change it to 14. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click apply. And I'm going to click OK again. And that should have changed my size, but of course it did not. <sighs> says here that it's set. Apply. But it's not changing the actual size. Not sure why that is. Still didn't. All right, so I'm going to have to leave it at this size for right now until I figure out what the problem is. But what I want to do is now it created that package for me. That's what I created. It created my class that's called Payroll. What I like to do is put each one of these curly braces on its own line. I don't care how you do it, but I want you to have a style, a programming style. Even if it's not one that I use, that's okay. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to write my first Java program. All right. And inside of main, I'm going to put in five variables. String first name equals Jeff. String last name equals Scott. Double hours, and I'm lining this stuff up. You don't have to do that. Equal 40.0. This is very similar to the program they put in the book. Double rate equals 25.0. Double gross equals zero. All right, so what I've just done is I've created five variables. Let me put a comment for each variable. First name. Last name, hours worked, hourly rate, gross pay, which is hours times rate. All right. Now I get these yellow things here and here because I haven't used these variables yet. I've declared them and I've initialized them. This is the declaration here. That's the initialization here. Declaration, 
initialization. Declaration, initialization. Declaration, initialization. Declaration, initialization. And declaration, initialization. Notice when I come down here and I write gross, I'm going to write now gross equal hours times rate. And once I do, the yellow, these three yellow things will go away and the yellow things over here will go away. So gross equals hours times rate. Hit enter and you'll notice, well that one didn't go away, I'm not sure why, but the other two did. And everything will be going away in just a second. So what I want to do is I want to write this program and after I write it, I want the results, what I want, I want it to show right in here. All right, so you're going to see that in just a minute. So to do that, I write it system.out.println. All right, and I'm going to say first name. And I'm just going to copy this. Now, I'm not going to run it now because if I did, it would say, Five times, first name, Jeff, first name, Jeff, five times. Well, I, I don't want to do that, but I'll change this to last name. And you'll notice these are all both gone now, so I only have the one warning here. All right. Um, so, hours. And again, you can line stuff up here, but you don't have to. Rate. And finally, we'll just say here, gross pay. All right, now notice that nothing is highlighted. All right. So let's run this. Again, I'm sorry that it's the size that it is, but for some reason I couldn't get that to change. But you should always save before you go to do this. So I'm just going to click the Save icon and do what's called a run, run. And then notice what it put in here in our area. First name Jeff, last name Scott, hours 40.0, rate 40.0, gross pay 100.0. All right? If it bothers you, if it bothers you, you say, well, Really, hours should have said 40.00. This should have said hours.00. This should have had a dollar sign and a comma, etc. All right, just to show you quickly, we could have changed these. I could have said here, instead of print, I could say system.out.printf. And then what I'd say here would be percent point two %2f, which means I'm about to print something. And what I'm about to print. I want, I want to set it up so it's got two decimal places in it. And if that doesn't make sense, watch when I, when I run this in just a second, if you would. And we'll do that for the last one, too. I'll manually put in a dollar sign here. All right. And we'll change this to print F from print line to print F, and it's something they took from the C language. But then I'm going to do something a little bit different here. All right, before we put, um, so we need a comma here. So we need to say dollar sign um, percent point two F. And I'll leave it like that for now, just so you can see this, so you can see the difference. All right, so I'm going to save it again. So do a file, save, or click the save icon, do a run run and it looks a little bit better except I lost my blank lines but I'll fix those right now all right so I'll have to put in here after each one of these a backslash n which means add a new line backslash n and let's even put one at the bottom even though we don't need it to backslash n save run run and you can see now what this looks like Jeff Scott 40.00 the only thing I'm missing here is a comma which would make it look a little bit nicer so where I've got my dollar sign in here, instead of using what I have here, I can use, I think it's system.out.format. And I think if I put a comma after the dollar sign, let's see what that does. I'm going to save, run, run. Well, I'll put the comma in the wrong place, but you're getting the idea. All right, so let's try this. 
0.2F, let's put a comma there. Again, this could be wrong. I'll have to check on this, but there is a way to set that up. Oh, now the comma is here. It's in your book, but I can format it so it does have a comma in it. Maybe it's percent. Comma? I don't know. Well, look at that. So there's our first Java program. Okay? Let's very quickly walk through what's in here. Well, we've got our package statement. This is what we created because everything that's in, in a Java program must be in a package. So that edu.blackhawk.jscott is exactly what you see right here. When we created this on one of our last screens, when we created the class, we called it payroll, which meant it was saved as payroll.java. That made this. Since it's a Java application, every Java application must have a main method here. So it starts here and it ends here. We created five variables. So I can add some more comments in here if I want to, and I, I tend to do this. You may or may not want to. But I tend to come in here and say begin, oops, and end, and again, begin, and end. And maybe a comment here that says something like uh, declare and initialize program variables, something like that. All right, here, calculate gross pay. And then here, output all uh, inputted and calculated info, okay? And that's it. So I'll save one more time to another run run to make sure I didn't change anything. You'll notice that I did not. It's got the first name, the last name, the hours, the rate, and the gross pay. The one thing that's bad, so to speak, about this program is this program I can run it a million times and it'll always have the same thing because I've hard-coded in the first name, the last name, the hours, the rate, okay? So it's always going to give me the same outputs. In the next chapter, what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll talk about how to change that so we can manually enter our first name, our last name, etc. So we'll do that in just a couple minutes.